When decorating our homes, most people like to keep it simple. The suburbs are packed with droves of nearly identical houses, but some individuals choose to stand out from the crowd. From invisible tree houses to beautiful penthouses, we are exploring the weirdest homes in the world. If you're the kind of homeowner who values privacy, this is definitely not the house for you. Designed by So Fokimoto, the transparent house in Tokyo, Japan is the definition of an open floor plan. The three-story edifice features various levels of living space within the segmented structure that's great to just hang out on, as if you were perched atop a tree branch. Fokimoto said that he envisioned the structure as a variation on a tree house, with room to be playful and spontaneous. The extreme openness of the design was at the request of the clients, a young couple with no children. In case you're wondering how the couple ever manages to get time alone, curtains were installed to provide temporary partitions that address the concern for privacy and separation at night. Of course, this house isn't for everyone, but because of the massive amount of press the house received Fokimoto frequently gets requests for similar designs. Seemingly the work of fiction, this unusual California house has also been boldly brought to life by skateboarder and designer Gil Le Bon de la Pointe and Los Angeles-based architect Francois Perrin, a world champion, pro skater, and the brain behind Salt Technology, his very own skateboard footwear and apparel company. This unusual house can easily be appreciated for both its modern architectural aesthetic as well as for its skateboard-friendly curves, inside and out. The concrete and glass residence is named Pass House, after the former world champion, and is split into three sections to accommodate living and dining areas at one end, a bed and bathroom in the middle, and a practice area at the far end. The concept of the house is a ribbon that creates a continuous surface to be skated from the outside to the inside. Each space is skatable, as the ground becomes the wall, then the ceiling, in a continuous surface forming a tube of a 10-foot radius. Senezergis says that he hopes to host his skater friends for years to come. Warsaw, Poland is home to the world's skinniest house, which doubles as an art installation. Designed by Polish architect Jakub Szczesny, the Karet House in Warsaw is wedged inside a four-foot crevice, described as a cushion of air, between two buildings. The Karet House stretches over 30 feet tall, but is simultaneously only 28 inches wide at its narrowest point, thinner than a stovetop, and just four feet wide at its widest. The house was built for famed Polish-Israeli filmmaker and writer Edgar Karet. Karet said he was moved by the construction of the house, as his family hasn't had one in Warsaw for the past 70 years. At a press conference which took place in October 2012, Karet said that it was his first time that he'd come to Poland not as a tourist or a writer promoting a book, then he was coming home. Though most people are not clamoring to live in such a cramped space, there's a long waiting list for this now famous home. Karet says that he will pass it on to a friend or colleague when he moves out. Fed up with high mortgage prices in the countryside, a man decided to build his very own eco-friendly hobbit house in a woodland. Simon Dale, a freelance photographer, spent only 3,000 pounds on a hillside home in Wales and built it in less than four months, using little more than a chainsaw, a hammer, and a one-inch chisel. Despite not having experience as a carpenter or contractor, he was determined to build a home that was at one with nature, embracing the landscape around him and using mostly recycled materials. With this ethical drive, Dale scrounged up wood and branches and laid out the framework for his woodland abode. He invites the obvious comparisons to J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit. The mound of earth wouldn't be out of place in the fictional fantasy wonderland, The Shire. Simon lives in the house with his writer and gardener wife and two children, and insists that building an eco-home from scratch is easy. This kind of building is accessible to anyone. My main relevant skills were being able-bodied, having self-belief and perseverance, and a mate or two to give me a lift now and again. From the exterior, this house looks like a simple utilitarian water tower. Chateau d'Eau is a 100-foot-tall Belgian water tower that was recently converted into a single-family home. Built in 1938, the brick and concrete tower now houses a two-car garage, two bedrooms, and a sizable multifunction room and kitchen in the former water tank. The occupants can also ascend to the rooftop terrace, where they can observe the surrounding village of Sternacherzeel. Chateau d'Eau was designed by BAM Design Studio. It was in service until the 1990s, and was even used as a watchtower by the Nazis when they took over Belgium in World War II. The exterior of the six-story structure was originally renovated prior to the interior restoration which began in 2007. Once the damaged concrete columns were repaired and painted, brick joints were completely removed and replaced, and the windows in the floor top were enlarged, the architect and his team proceeded to work on the interior design. This Brooklyn penthouse was long considered unsellable. While the real estate was prime, agents had an impossible time finding a buyer. That is until 2017, when an unnamed buyer dropped $17 million on the apartment. It's a triplex penthouse in Brooklyn, a 633 square meter spread atop the landmark clock tower building. 
The building is a former cardboard box factory built in 1914. The incredible penthouse features 4.2 meter tall clock faces on every wall that allow plenty of natural light, while also providing amazing views of the Brooklyn Bridge and the New York Harbor. The jaw-dropping 6,813 square feet penthouse offers you a 360 degree view of the city, overlooking the Brooklyn Bridge and Manhattan. Its signature feature, however, are the four massive clocks installed in 14 foot high round windows on each wall. The three-story apartment with the ceiling going from 16 to 50 feet in height also has a glass elevator running up its center. Based on the enormously popular 1960s cartoon The Flintstones, this San Francisco house is modeled after the fictional town of Bedrock and comes complete with dinosaur statues and prehistoric decor. With the words Yabba Dabba Doo inscribed on the lawn, it's clear that the owner of this home is a bit obsessed with the program. But not everyone felt the same way about this unique property. Neighbors tried to forcibly remove the Flintstones motif by declaring the house a public nuisance. The court battle rages on to this day, with many activists standing up for the one-of-a-kind home. The house was purchased purchased by Florence Fang in the 1970s for $2.8 million. Rather than cherry trees or a vineyard, Miss Fang installed 15-foot dinosaur statues as well as a giant metal woolly mammoth and giraffe, a garden of colorful oversized mushrooms, and a rainbow and peacock sculpture. One California man took downsizing to a new extreme. Jeff Wilson, a professor at the University of Texas, converted a six-square-foot dumpster into a fully functional home, complete with running water and kitchen. The environmental studies professor wanted to prove how simply people can live in such a compact space. It all started as a project that he began with his students. The idea was basically this. Jeff and his students would turn the regular dumpster into a sustainable home, where he would then live for an entire year. On February 4, 2014, Jeff moved into what would be his home for the next year, a normal green dumpster. The first night, he slept in a sleeping bag on some unfolded cardboard boxes on the floor. The dumpster has come a long way since then. He added lighting, a new floor, and plenty of decorations to make it feel cozy. The project was a response to the lack of housing globally and the advent of the micro-housing movement in crowded cities like Austin. Somewhere in the megalopolis of Mexico City is one of the world's strangest homes. This particular home has a marine motif and resembles a seashell. The story goes like this. A young family tired of their conventional home yearned to live in something a little more integrated with nature. Their wish was granted by Javier Sinosian of Sinosian Arquitectos, a celebrated Mexican architect whose work is considered both pioneering and controversial in the field of bioarchitecture. Instead of a boring old practical square dwelling, they now live inside a giant psychedelic mollusk shell. Inspired by the work of Gaudi and Frank Lloyd Wright, the seashell house is dominated by smooth surfaces, spiral stairs, and natural plantings that make it feel like you're living inside a snail. The house design is very innovative, unusual, and audacious. Upon first glance, this structure is the result of an unfortunate crash landing in the jungle, but it's actually a hotel, and yes, you can stay in it. The fuselage, or the frame of an aircraft, is one of many accommodations offered by Hotel Costa Verde, a vacationer's dream resort nestled in Manuel Antonio National Park, located in Quepos, Costa Rica. Its many lodgings and amenities include not just the Boeing 727 fuselage suite, but also a restaurant carved out of another airplane, a cockpit cottage built out of an aeropostal aircraft, and a railroad car turned restaurant. Staying here is not your run-of-the-mill hotel experience. The suite has an outdoor deck over each wing, one of which affords viewers sights of the jungle and the Pacific Ocean. The hotel is much more expensive than most lodging in the area, and it's easy to understand why. This house is a child's dream come true. Japanese studio Level Architects has designed an unusual three-story family house, equipped with a slide that connects all three floors. This fun house is wrapped with staircases and a corridor on one side and the slide on the other side, which together form a circular route around the central area of the house. The living areas are located on the first floor and lead out to a double-height terrace, which also doubles up as a ball pen for children to play in. A bedroom and bathroom are located on the top floor, and a Japanese-style room and home office can be found at ground level. The 1,762-square-foot Nakameguro home is located in Meguroku, one of the municipalities of Tokyo, Japan. Needless to say, the owner's children are the most popular kids on the block. The Steel House in the Plains near Lubbock, Texas has a story of inspiration and tragedy. Robert Bruno, a Texas-based architect, labored on the house for more than 30 years but never lived to see its completion. 
It's lay unused since 2008. Very little of his work exists anymore or is traceable, but he did go on to design and build a whole house based on this earlier sculpture. Bruno's Steel House, which overlooks the lake in Ransom Canyon just east of Lubbock, looks fit for a superhero villain. The artist never really explained where his influences came from. He never tried to justify his work. He just wanted to form these shapes out of steel, so he did. The building slash structure does not seem to have any concept. Some people see a resemblance to cars from the 50s. Some people see insect carapaces. Others see a home that would be quite happy on a canyon site on Mars. Germany's latest roadside attraction will turn everything you know on its head. You can find the cafe along the A3 Autobahn in Wertheim. As well as a coffee shop, there's also a fully upside-down house next to it, which is open for the public to explore. The entire establishment belongs to an imaginary family named the Topples. It's not just the outside which looks topsy-turvy. Inside, everything is upside down as well. Fruit bowls hang down from the kitchen ceiling, and you'll even find a toilet above your head in the bathroom. As if that wasn't all sufficiently disorienting, the entire building is built on a 6% incline. From the outside, this gives the impression that the house somehow fell to earth and came to rest precariously on its roof. And inside, the extra slant just emphasizes the already befuddling nature of the upside-down house in Trostenheide. A contender for Korea's wackiest museum, Mr. Toilet House is the former residence of Suwon's mayor, the late Sim Jae Duk. Appropriately designed like a toilet, it houses hilarious feces-related exhibits and a sculpture garden, as well as covering more serious sanitation issues. The museum is also an NGO, established to improve public sanitation worldwide. Kids especially will love it, and there's a children's museum across the road with an observatory deck for viewing the toilet house. During the 1990s, the then mayor of Suwon City, Mr. Sim Jae Duk, was well known for promoting and beautifying South Korean public toilet culture. His passion for the potty was so rich that in 2007, he completely redesigned his house of 30 years into the shape of a toilet seat. Upon Mr. Sim's death in 2009, the house was donated to Suwon City, who converted the building to a toilet culture museum the following year in his honor. The toilet museum now serves as a testament to his legacy.